Welcome back. The way domestic abuse cases are handled in Dane County Court can be improved. That's according to the latest report from Domestic Abuse Intervention Services, or DAIS. The organization studied court cases between 2021 and 2022. The last time they did this kind of study was in 2018. Now, I am joined by DAIS Executive Director Shannon Berry. Always good to talk to you. It's always Thanks. nice to see you. Absolutely. Uh, so let's start with just kind of the, the big message. What do you think the biggest message you want viewers to take away from this report that DAIS did? Uh, sure. So, you know, DAIS has been doing these reports for many, many years, um, and we do them on a two-year cycle. Um, and part of doing this report is really to align with uh, the second part of our mission is to advance uh, social change through support, education, and outreach. And the, the um, roots of this report come from our legal advocates who are victim service representatives. They're not attorneys. They don't provide legal advice. But really hearing from victims about what they were experiencing within the court system. And so we have volunteers volunteer observers who go in to injunction hearings uh, for an entire year and from that they elicit some of the things that they see in terms of best practices of the judicial system and then some of the things that they see as concerning and so what we saw this time was there were a number of things that were uh, replicated um, from our 2018 report that we saw again uh, but then there were also some improvements and then still some opportunities I think for um, improvements going forward um, some of the areas where we saw an opportunity for improvement was uh, more consistency across the judicial branches in terms of how they're managing these hearings, um, as well as more consistency in, in terms of talking about things like the mandatory firearm prohibitions that come along with domestic violence restraining orders, um, service by publication, and then really following a state statute in terms of granting injunctions for the length of time that the victim is requesting. Absolutely. You mentioned inconsistency, or mm -hmm. you're looking for more consistency. Right. Um, what has consistency in the Dane County court system look like for domestic abuse? For injunction hearings, which are long-term long restraining orders, um, the judges rotate on hearing injunction hearings. Um, and so we have 17 circuit court judges here in Dane County. So there's sort of 17 different ways of how injunction hearings are approached. And some of the practices that we're seeing from judges is, are really great and some of them are not so great, but having sort of a consistency in terms of how those hearings are, are managed. Um, so some of the good practices that we saw were judges who started the, um, the day of hearing injunctions, um, you know, outlining the expectations of the court, telling folks what they could expect if they would be, you know, testifying from the witness stand, if they could testify from the counsel table, and being really explicit about how the day was going to run. Um, other judges, we didn't necessarily see that, and so depending on which judge is on duty that week, we might see dis dis disparate uh, practices. And so having the judges come together and set some standards about and protocols about how they will manage injunction hearings, I think would be really important because so that, that way, um, victims and the service representatives like legal advocates from days or Unidos or the attorneys of victims can help them prepare for what to expect when they go into an injunction hearing. These can often be very traumatic experiences for victims because for many of them it might be the first time that they've seen their abusive partner um, and, and being in a space with them can be really re-traumatizing and triggering. And so the more that we can do in advance to help victims prepare for what that court hearing is going to look like, the better. So it would be really helpful if all the judges would, would um, come together to align their practices. You also mentioned you're looking for improvements in, in cases involving firearms. Yep. Expand on that a little bit about best practices there. When um, a domestic abuse injunction is um, granted, um, there's different types of injunctions. There's domestic abuse ones and then her there's harassment. Um, and people who are experiencing intimate partner violence typically can choose whichever one. With domestic abuse ones, um, there is a mandatory firearm prohibition where the respondent, if it's been granted, and the person that the injunction has been granted against, must re uh, relinquish their firearms. So we saw in some cases where judges were explicitly asking about firearms, um, and in other cases, the domestic abuse injunction was granted, but there was really no follow-up dialogue about whether or not there were firearms in the in, in the um, 
respondent's uh, ownership. And so making sure that that is followed um, because it is a statutory requirement. That, that seems those, fairly significant. It, the judge is not very, asking about firearms in this type of case. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it is very significant. I mean, we certainly know that when there's a firearm present, the um, potential for homicide goes way up. And, you know, I think it can be um, having an injunction granted against one can escalate things. And so ensuring that that firearm prohibition and the firearms are being talked about. Um, and again, it's not not very frequent, but it's it's enough that it's a little mm -hmm. concerning that we're not seeing that consistently um, being discussed. Advocacy is what you're doing right now. You've right. got this in the reports. You're, you're here doing an interview talking about this. Sure. Is there any other measures available to advocates like yourself to actually in, to, to seek better enforcement of asking if a firearm is, you know, present? Yeah, I mean, so part of the you know purpose of doing this report, we share it you know with the community broadly, but we also share it with the Commission on Sensitive, the Dane County Commission on Sensitive Crimes, uh, which you know has representation from a wide swath of not just service providers but also system um, systems people. Uh, we share it at the Legal Issues Subcommittee of that group. Um, we in the past have also been invited to the judges' meetings to present, um, and this report is you know publicly available on our website, um, so anybody can review it. Um, but I think it's really um, important that we share the information and that judges can see both the things that are going really, really well and then there's the opportunities for improvement within the system. I will say that I think, you know, we did see a lot of really great things also during this um, during this data collection. You know, we experienced our, our volunteers saw judges who, even when they weren't able to grant the restraining order because there wasn't enough evidence, that they would still explicitly say to the victim, I'm not granting it because of these reasons, but then also saying to the perpetrator in the courtroom, what you're doing is emotionally abusive and you need mm -hmm. to stop. And so even giving that validation to victims when they weren't necessarily able to achieve the injunction, but ultimately, it's really you know up to the judges, um, and um, you know we have some judges in Dane County who are absolutely phenomenal, who really invest time uh, working to become more trauma informed in their courtroom practices, and then others who have some areas where they might want to explore um, additional training. What a great you know service to the domestic abuse victims in mm -hmm. providing this court watch report and making sure someone is providing some oversight. Right. Keeping an eye on that. So right. great report. Thanks so much Thank for you. talking about it. Thank you. I appreciate you having us here. All right. That's it for now. We'll be right back.